baseball tonight from Angel Stadium in Anaheim, California, where the Angels go for a three-game sweep over the Royals. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the ballpark with Rex Hudler. I'm Ryan Lefevre. And first things first for the Royals, they need to get through the first inning without allowing a run tonight, Hud. They need a good start from a starting pitcher, and Brad Keller's already beaten the Angels this year. That's right, so he should have some confidence, but if you're an opening day starter like Brad Keller was this year, you're that guy for a reason. You're trustworthy, you're solid, they believe in you, you're one of the best. They need him more than ever to step up now and be the ace of the staff and shut them down, not only in the first inning, but go deep into this game as you can. He has the ability, let's hope it happens. He'll be opposed by Griffin Canning, and that's who Keller faced back in April at Kauffman Stadium, and the Royals beat him, which included a home run from Salvador Perez. Hey, Harold, how do you prepare for a big show? Well, I just try to stay positive, take it one show at a time, and treat it just like any other show. How do you feel about the other analysts you work with? It's a great group of guys. We're all on the same page. I'm just happy to be here. What's your prediction for the season? We'll see what happens. It all comes down to execution in the studio. The pro player answers. He's still got it. <laughs> the analyst of MLB Tonight, answering baseball's toughest questions on MLB Network. Kevin Millar and Stephen Nelson promise to bring you all the fun from around the league. Pinky promise. And, and you know, and these, these can't be broken. Intentional talk. Only on MLB Network. Hey, Harold, how do you prepare for a big show? Well, I just try to stay positive, take it one show at a time, and treat it just like any other show. How do you feel about the other analysts you work with? It's a great group of guys. We're all on the same page. I'm just happy to be here. What's your prediction for the season? We'll see what happens. It all comes down to execution in the studio. The pro player answers. He's still got it. The analyst of MLB Tonight, answering baseball's toughest questions on MLB Network. been robbing home runs and hitting home runs. They have hit six in the first two. They've won the first two games of the series and 12 of the last 15 against the Royals. Claire, how do you know how much bling to wear before each game? What bling you wear during the game is a very important decision. You want to wear enough so you look good, but not too much where it slows you down on the base pass. Some diamonds are always nice. But on a sunny day, the reflection can get in your eye and make you miss the play. Thanks, Cliff. Very informative. <laughs> the analyst of MLB Tonight, answering baseball's toughest questions, only on MLB Network. Wake up for a full day of baseball on MLB Central, featuring an all-star lineup of hosts and a colorful cast of guests all season. The fun never stops on MLB Central. Weekday mornings, 10 Eastern, only on MLB Network.
While it is hot and humid in Kansas City, it is beautiful in Southern California. 72 degrees with a light wind out of the west southwest. The Royals will go north to Oakland after the game tonight and begin a four game series there tomorrow. Royals have lost four in a row after a five game winning streak. They were scoring in bunches. They had averaged eight runs per game in the previous seven, but now the Royals have scored just nine runs over their last four and just four runs in the first two games of this series. And Mike Matheny has a couple of left-hand bats back in there against a right-hander Griffin Canning. Andrew Benintendi is back in there batting third and Nicky Lopez will bat ninth. He will be at shortstop. Griffin Canning, 25 years old and a former second round pick of the Angels. He has a 5.82 ERA. Time to get him. Don't let him up. StatCast powered by Google Cloud. Four seamer, slider, change, curve, cutter. But you know, mainly the top three at that, that four seam fastball. Look for it. He can, you can get him on that. Five home runs on that, five on the slider. He's a guy that we should be able to mop up. Now look, uh, we no one can call baseball because we have no idea. But hopefully the Royals can score early and off and off of him, give Keller some support, and get a win before they leave here. Defensively, the Angels have not fared well, but they've done well in this series. Taylor Ward, sixth uh, start in center field in his career. David Fletcher a, is fluent in Italian. He was raised speaking both English and Italian. How about that? In That'll Southern, come in handy tonight. Yeah, in Southern California. How about uh, Griffin Kenny? He won his first gold glove last year. Guy, how about that? He's a pretty good fielder. That came from Mark Langston, a six-time gold glover. So if Benintendi gets on, Fletcher can go, hey, Benintendi. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Canning's first pitch is a riding fastball in for a strike to Witt. Witt has hit in nine in a row. He got his first bunt single in the game last night. Breaking balls outside, and lately Witt has been clearing the table more than he's been setting the table. He's had a very productive year with RBIs. And a fastball is lined to the right side and that's into right center field. There you go. Nice to see him go into the opposite field there. So he is hitting 10 straight. He's a machine. And now Carlos Santana. And while Witt has been warming up with the weather, Santana has cooled down lately. He's just one for his last 15. And one for seven in this series. He'll pick it back up again. Hopefully it's tonight. Guys can get uh, hot and get a win before they go play four in Oakland. They're worried about Witt trying to steal a base. They should. He leads the league. Got 17. Santana, you know, in game one, hit his first time up, he hit a ball, you know, that was robbed. I mean, just right over the fence there in the first time. He's, he's got plenty of power. He just hit it off the end of his bat. Barrel one early. Get the lead early for Keller. It's a good combo to run on. Canning on the mound and Stassi behind the plate. And Canning throws over there. It was a close play. Royals lead the league as a team in stolen bases. HUD told you Witt leads both leagues. But base runners are three out of four against Canning and 11 out of 13 against the catcher, Max Stassi. Witt's not running, and Santana swings through a fastball, one ball, one strike. Well, we, Witt milked a move from Canning, and he's got a good one. 
When you're a gold glover, you're well rounded out there defensively, fielding your position, but also with quick feet, holding runners good. A couple pickoffs already this year. Another thing the Angels have done well is they have pitched well in this series. And the series began with the Angels with the most errors in the major leagues and the highest team ERA in the American League. Santana pulls it foul to the right side. But the Angels have not committed an error in this series. They have not committed an error over their previous three games. And their pitching staff has allowed just four runs in the first two games. And Joe Madden's team is playing as good now as they have all season. They have won 10 of their last 15 after falling to a season worst eight games under 500. And this is all without Mike Trout, center fielder. It's impressive. Great block by Stassi and then. Little incidental contact there and Merrifield stays at first. You know, I was talking about the Royals leading the league in stolen bases. They have two more than Texas. But San Diego has 22 more stolen bases than the Royals. <laughs> The Royals have 43 stolen bases. The Padres have 65 stolen bases to lead the major leagues. Wow. That team can do it all. Sure they can. Santana goes down on a breaking ball. So pretty good focus there by Canning because you could tell he was just as worried about Merrifield over at first and sometimes that is a recipe for a disaster. Better believe it. Take that focus away. And and speaking of that, Santana typically takes pitches like that. He's got a great eye. But you said he's scuffling and he's over swinging right now, trying to get it back. Andrew Benintendi had the night off last night. He was 0 for 4 in game one. And the Angels pitch out. Canning was quick to the plate. And normally if a pitcher is going to pitch out he does not want to be quick to the plate because he wants the runner to go but. Canning was so fast that Witt wasn't able to get a good jump so he just kind of wasted a pitch. Yeah maybe. He'll give Ben Tindy something he can drive. So just the fact that, that you know Witt's can run and steal that, that, that means that could be get given a fastball to Benintendi. Get the ball home quicker. Don't have to go. Upstairs 2 and 0. Wait him out. Make him make him throw a strike. Good movement, but that's high. Three balls and no strikes. So we'll talk about Brad Keller and his challenges in the first thing when he takes the mound, but the same for Griffin Canning. He has made nine starts and he's allowed 10 runs, and he is coming off a rough outing on Thursday against Seattle. Three balls, one strike. Benintendi didn't say anything out loud there, but he said to himself, I'll take that one again right there. Went had such a good jump that he didn't trust it. Yeah. <laughs> he would have did it for nothing anyway since he fouled it off.
There's just something uncomfortable when base runner takes a step or two and the pitcher hasn't gone to the mound and just yeah, there's something. Yeah, he's realizing, man, I, I had him time perfectly. And now Benintendi takes low. So the Royals have two on with one out. So you can tell by Canning's body language that he's not real comfortable. So this is a, a good thing for the Royals here just in the first inning. Got a guy who's given up a lot of runs in the first inning. And he knows it. So he's being careful and that's when you get him. And Salvi has one of his 14 home runs this year against Canning in a game back at Coffin Stadium on April 14th. In fact, that was Canning and Brad Keller in that game at Coffin Stadium, and those two match up again tonight. Two on, one out. And Stassi, you take that one in the mask? Sure did. I wouldn't be surprised to see if uh, there's a little double steal going here early. Make sure it's early in the count so you can give Salvi some no some non-distractive uh, pitches. Can you come again? Second base. When you're moving, you see that the hitter sees that behind the pitcher. Sometimes it distracts you, gets you out of your focus. But I wouldn't mind seeing him double steal here. Salvi is three out of eight in the first two games of the series. One ball, one strike. He has played five games against the Angels this year, and he has 11 hits. Two and one. Eleven for twenty. Four RBIs. And a great defensive play back in Kansas City in that three game series, which ended the game. Don't have to pull him either. That first swing he put on him was a pull swing, but he salvi has got power to all fields. Lousy single would work. His body language looks like he's in the fifth inning. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. He looks stressed. Look at that. Worried about and now it. Now he throws it yeah. into center field. There's your double steal. Thank you. So here we go. Now the, they're starting their, their error ways. That was forced. We had a hard time getting out, oh, out of Fletcher's way. He was on top of him. Right side's wide open, except for the first baseman who's right in the middle of first and second. Two and two. Royals have gone down one, two, three in the first inning in the first two games. And then the Angels scored four in the first inning in game one and then two last night. Royals have not led yet. And he got him to chase, which Canning did a lot of against the Royals back in April. So both of his outs have been strikeouts. And now two on for Soler. He got two fastballs earlier and he missed them. Did the job. So the focus changes from his at bat to getting Brad Keller ready for the bottom of the first. And here's Jorge Soler with two runners in scoring position. See if Soler could pick him up. 
be ready. Those 93 to 94 mile hour fastballs right down the middle should be hit. Got to be ready for those. Solaire has one hit in the first two games, and that was a home run, leaving him one shy of 100 for his career. But the Royals will take a bloop to right with runners at second and third in the first inning. Anything to get the runs home early. Two balls and no strikes. Three and zero with Hunter Dozier on deck. And that's 21 pitches, make it 22 for Canning. And he has a couple of strikeouts, but you can just almost feel his the tension and his defense. He's probably thinking to themselves, let's go. This is all self-imposed. And that is outside for a walk. So a single, two strikeouts, two walks, and an error. And pitching coach Matt Wise is going to go out and have a chat. There's more than one reason why a pitcher has struggles in the first inning and just watching Canning in the first inning tonight. It seems like a lack of focus or just not focusing on what he needs to. I mean he really let the base runners get to him. Yeah. He looks squirrely. He's not. You know, he's, he's out of his rhythm. He's, Hunter Dozier two nights ago had his first three hit game of the year. But as HUD would say. Humble pie was awaiting him before the game last night and he had a three <laughs> strikeout game. It awaits all by the way just trying to find some traction and he's got a big spot here in the first inning and that breaking ball is going to be called a strike. It's because they know he swings at all first pitches except for that one there. Somehow some way. Find it. Pitch number 25. And it's 0 2. Dozier hits it on the ground to short. Iglesias goes to Fletcher, and out of all that, the Royals get zip against Canning. Brad Keller takes them out tonight. Nurse. My new money goal? My new money goal? We've got money goals. Buy a place closer to my family down south. Invest in black owned companies. Invest in green companies. Invest for my daughter's future and my retirement at the same time. Have, have a, a better, better credit card than her. Than her. <laughs> Whatever your money goals, NerdWallet knows the smartest ways to make them happen. Compare and find the smartest credit cards, mortgages, and investing accounts on NerdWallet. For all your money questions, turn to the nerds. When we started our company, we simply wanted better sheets. But along the way, we've realized that softer, safer, organic cotton does so much more for the planet and for humanity. It helps your home become a force for good because home is more than just an address. Home is our soul. Bowling Branch, organic sheets, bath, and home. Right now, try for 30 nights risk free and get free shipping at bowlingbranch.com.
as a scoreless top of the first inning. And now here come the Angels, who are third in the league in home runs. They have hit six in this series. So Tani had a 470 foot home run in the game last night. So they'll get Brad Keller. Keller going up against Griffin Canning back on April the 14th. Beat the Angels. All right. It's up to Brad Keller to stop this losing streak. And I mean tonight. Sinker, four seam natural cutter, slider changeup. All of them stay out of the zone and stay on the edges. Quality strikes. Justin Upton in a new role as leadoff hitter. This is his 15th game batting first. And he hits it very high to right field. One pitch and one out. Ford around the horn. Royals defense. Andrew Benintendi in left field. He's a road warrior this year. He's batting. He's fifth in the league with a 326 batting average on the road. And Carlos Santana, 56 starts at first base this year, three as a designated hitter. He's a guy who's been there almost in all of them. And now you see Brad Keller. How about a one, two, three first inning and then go from there. Now Shohei Otani showing bunt with Gutierrez deep and closer to the shortstop position than at third. Did you see how he watched that ball all the way into the catcher's glove? You guys that are struggling, that's what you need to do more of. Bunt, see the ball in. To right center field and Dozier was over in that direction. So three pitches and two outs for Keller. Okay. I'm still holding my breath. One more out. Oh man, it's been a rough beginning here to this road trip. We showed you how he pitched well against the Angels back in April, and he had a scoreless first inning, and that was the first time this season that he had a scoreless first inning. And went on to give up just one earned run and five and two thirds. That was his third start of the year. So two up, two down, and Rendon takes a fastball for a strike. And here's Keller's troubles coming into today in the first inning. A nine ERA and a 370 opponent's batting average. Late movement, and that catches the outside edge. 0 and 2 on Rendon. That was a nice looking pitch there. Staying out of the middle. Rendon is just one for seven in the series, but that one hit drove in a run against Jackson Kowar in the first inning on Monday, and 98 from Brad Keller. That was a six pitch, all strikes, bottom of the first. Go ahead, Brad. At Home Chef, we believe a delicious meal should always fit your schedule. It might be a make it easy meal kit Monday, or a toss it in the oven Tuesday, or a what am I, a chef now Wednesday, or even a day that doesn't need a clever name, like steak. On a Thursday. Get $90 off your first month at homechef.com. Also available at select stores. Home Chef, delicious, meat simple. This is cellulose acetate, a plant-based material that's not only extremely durable, but also quite flexible, making it ideal for Warby Parker glasses, which, by the way, start at $95, including prescription lenses. Try five pairs for free at warbyparker.com. Oh yeah, about those prescription lenses. Warby Parker glasses come standard with custom-cut polycarbonate lenses that have been treated with scratch-resistant and anti-reflective coatings. Nice. Try five pairs for free at warbyparker.com.
on Tuesday for the first T-shirt Tuesday of the season and receive a Together Royal T-shirt presented by Graceland University. Get tickets now at royals.com slash promotions. Gutierrez, Taylor, and Lopez are coming up against Griffin Canning, who loaded the bases with a single and two walks, but he also struck out two and got an inning-ending fielder's choice. It took 26 pitches for him to get through the first inning. And Brad Keller threw six pitches to get through the bottom of the first, so Canning's right back out there. And he's down and away, ball one on Gutierrez. Franklin's hitless in this series. He is 0 for his last 10 since ending a career best seven game hitting streak. Two balls and no strikes. Kelvin Gutierrez. Royals let him off the hook at first inning. Time to move on. Get guys on again and don't miss your pitch. Laid on a fastball. There's another reason why the Royals let him off the hook because he was pitching from behind in most of that inning. The couple of fastballs that Salvi got with runners at second and third and one out. Calvin hits that hard to the gap in right center field and Ward comes over and makes the play. Gutierrez is 0 for his last 11, but that was a good swing to the opposite field against Canning. Canning will throw a lot of pitches. So we'll see how his defense picks him up tonight with all that time to for the mind to wander in between pitches. And that's something to keep an eye on. Fouled off of Taylor's foot. Sure, that has something to do with it. But the other thing is, and we mentioned it last night, was, you know, a lot of these guys are playing out of position. He threw 80 pitches in three and a third innings Thursday against Seattle. Gave up four earned runs. Well, no wonder he looks nervous. Taylor goes the other way, and that will stay up for a sliding Wong. So two line outs to the outfield and two down for the Royals in the second. In game one of the series here, Wong played right for the first time in his life and he had a lot of putouts. He looked really good. This is a real test here. A line shot at you. Can you come and get it? He did with no problem. He's a good athlete. He looks like to me like he's hungry and he wants a position and some playing time. That's what you do. You perform. You make the plays. Nicky Lopez with two down. <laughs> Nicky did not play last night. He was one for four on Monday. And that's popped up. Iglesias goes out. And so Canning responds with an eight pitch. Second inning, no score to the bottom of the second. It's time for MLB Pitch, Hit, and Run, presented by MLB Network, the official youth skills competition of Major League Baseball. Give the kids in your community a chance to compete in the 2021 Pitch Hit and Run Finals by hosting a local competition. Sign up for free at PitchHitRun.com. Hey Pedro, hey Pedro. What was it like when you won your first Cy Young Award? Well, I was... What about when you won the Pitching Triple Crown? Well, um... And how did you feel when you won a World Series? I was, uh... Hey Pedro. Man, this guy asks a lot of questions. Hey Pedro. Pedro. He might make a good MLB Network analyst if you let someone answer a question. The analyst of MLB Tonight, answering baseball's toughest questions. Oh, and what's it like to be an eight-time All-Star? Well, and what uh, about getting into the Hall of Fame? 
Carlos, where did your signature term placata come from? Placata is just an expression my brothers and I used when we were kids. It means good, solid contact, usually resulting in a home run. Placata! <laughs> the analyst of MLB Tonight, answering baseball's toughest questions. Keller, six pitch first inning. We have seen Royals pitchers struggle and learn as they're going. It's a very young rotation. Chris Bubich, 23 years old. Daniel Lynch, 24. We saw him earlier. Jackson Coar, 24. Brady Singer, 24. So Brad Keller's the experienced one in that group. And let's not forget, He's just 25 years old. He'll turn 26 next month. Guys, I had the chance to talk to Whit Merrifield today. Uh, hitters will tell you they don't hang out with pitchers too often. They say that they're, they're different, they're unique. But those two are roommates. They're best friends. And talking to Whit, he said that really, in, in many ways, Brad struggled in April unlike he ever had in the big leagues. And that was a new learning process for him not just mechanically, but from a mental standpoint. And we know that Brad is one of the most likable, happy-go-lucky guys. And what Witt told me was that he was getting suggestions and feedback from everyone. And part of that learning process was figuring out how to tune out a lot of that and focus on what he needed to and who he needed to listen to instead of everyone. But make no mistake about it, Witt says that we believe we're going to win every time this guy steps on the mound. More importantly, he said, Keller believes the same. A lot of truth to that. Jared Walsh is on to begin the second inning. And now Max Stassi is coming up. Brad Keller has pitched well on the road lately. Here's our Home Depot getting more done. He's been getting more done away from Kauffman Stadium. He's four and one in his last five road starts. This time of night, the sun creeps through the, the uh, little spaces that are at the top of the stadium. This looks like it's bothering Keller a little bit. It's really hard on the first base. Good spot. You know, Keller, he has he has stuff. He, he's he could throw hard. You see see that sun right there. And when you get an early lead, it's, it can be tough. As a base runner too, looking at the pitcher. That sun right in your eyes. That was good. Good hard sinker there. It's a beautiful star. The sun. Oh, is that? Yeah, it is a star. As a matter of fact, it's beautiful though. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh man, just that. See, he's pitching. He's throwing so far with conviction. He's going right at him. Max Stassi has had a very good series. He has homered in three straight games for the first time. Bounced off the plate and Witt will step on the bag and that is a double play. 4-3. Good fortune there. And a catcher was running so Witt had a little time. Catch it, step and throw. Nicely done. And you know, back to what Joel was talking about, what Witt was saying uh, with Keller, when you're struggling in the big leagues, you'd be surprised how many hitting coaches or pitching coaches there are out there. Your friends, your parents, everyone is going to tell you stuff. Try and this. It, it gets frustrating, you know? And then you just have to learn how to say, hey, thank you, I appreciate that, and move on and just block out and not hurt their feelings and not get angry with them and say something unkind. Not say what Jim Palmer said to Earl Weaver when Earl Weaver came out to the mound. <laughs> Jim Palmer you, said to his manager, the only thing you know about pitching is that you couldn't hit it. <laughs> That's a great line. <laughs> you don't say that to your friends when they give you hitting tips? No, it was my mom that I have I worried about. She was the best hitting coach there ever was. Son, 
be better off with a boat or swinging at those pitches you're swinging at. Thanks, Mom. When's the last time you stood in the box? <laughs> we used to have, we used to go back and forth by mom. Uh, Taylor Ward is on with a two out walk. Yeah, another thing about the Angels not being as advertised in this series is that they had the fewest walks in the league as an offense. So part of that burden is on the Royals, but they have now walked nine times and four have turned into runs. So runner at first with two down to Jose Iglesias. He hit one of the five Angels home runs last night. Two runs better per game at home and have hit the most home runs in the league at home. And six in the first two games of the series and only two of the six have been solo home runs. So they've, they've hit some timely home runs with men on base. Jammed and Witt will take it himself. So Keller gets around a single and a walk as the Royals turn to double play in a scoreless second. Quill, how do you know how much bling to wear before each game? What bling you wear during the game is a very important decision. You want to wear enough so you look good, but not too much where it slows you down on the base pass. Some diamonds are always nice. But on a sunny day, the reflection can get in your eye and make you miss the play. Thanks, Cliff. Very informative. <laughs> the analyst of MLB Tonight, answering baseball's toughest questions, only on MLB Network. Hey, Pedro. Hey, Pedro. What was it like when you won your first Cy Young Award? Well, I was... What about when you won the pitching triple crown? Well, um... How did you feel when you won a World Series? I was, uh... Hey, Pedro. Man, this guy asks a lot of questions. Hey, Pedro. Pedro. He might make a good MLB Network analyst if you let someone answer a question. The analyst of MLB Tonight, answering baseball's toughest questions. Oh, and what's it like to be an eight-time All-Star? Well, I was, and what about uh, getting into the Hall of Fame? into a superstar in the game. Why? Because he has extreme skills. He's got power when you want it. He's not afraid to recognize those pitches and go for the pull shot. So mainly pull power and of course the speed is there. He's led the league in steals before and he's at it again this year. Fantastic, heady, smart player. You want other areas of his game? How about just producing, knocking runs in. He's doing that. He's on pace for 99 RBIs this year. Just really has a great knack for doing all the things that you need to do in a leadoff position or any kind of player. That's why I believe he's a superstar in the game. Joel and Monty talked about that on Price Chopper Royals Live, and they added another category, baseball IQ. And we saw that in the first inning tonight when he recognized that he was distracting Griffin Canning. Uh, Canning got him to pop a breaking ball up. What do they call it in in tennis? Forced errors and unforced errors or whatever. Yeah. He forced an error by getting Canning to try and pick him off at second base and the throw sailed into center field. That's right. I mean, there's hardly any replacement for high IQs of baseball in your 
you know, you're a player. You, you, you know situations. You know different times to pull things off offensively. Defensively, we all know he can play anywhere. That pitch right there struck out Carlos Santana in the first inning. You know that's that's his 38th pitch thrown and that shot we just saw of him. He looked more relaxed So it's taking him that many pitches to feel more comfortable. You know we didn't ask him how he feels we could tell by looking at him. And hitters see the same thing. Uh, another chance for Ward in center field two outs. Well, it took him 26 pitches to get through the first, and he was able to get around the bases loaded and only needed eight pitches to get through the second. And now, after all that struggling to get through the first inning, he has set down six in a row. And here's Ben Intendi, who walked and advanced on an air in the first inning. Breaking ball is low. Change up away. And the league just continues to be convinced that Andrew Benintendi is a pole hitter. One and two. Even though he has most of his hits to center field and he has 16 hits to left field. And Canning has another one, two, three inning. That is his third strikeout. He has set down seven Royals in a row. Clear. how do you know how much bling to wear before each game? What bling you wear during the game is a very important decision. You want to wear enough so you look good, but not too much where it slows you down on the base pass. Some diamonds are always nice, but on a sunny day, the reflection can get in your eye and make you miss the play. Thanks, Cliff. Very informative. <laughs> the analyst of MLB Tonight, answering baseball's toughest questions, only on MLB Network. It's not just because Bowlin Branch organic cotton sheets are incredibly soft. They are. And it's not just that they're free from toxins and made by people who are paid and treated fairly. That's true, too. It's because home is where the magic happens. And with better sheets made in safer ways, home makes the world a better place. Bowlin Branch. Right now, try for 30 nights risk-free and get free shipping at BowlinBranch.com. Wake up for a full day of baseball on MLB Central, featuring an all-star lineup of hosts and a colorful cast of guests all season. The fun never stops on MLB Central. Weekday mornings, 10 Eastern, only on MLB Network. and 9,400 for the first two games of the series. That is Angel Stadium. And our ballpark view tonight is provided by the T-Mobile coverage cam. 2019 was the 14th consecutive season where the Angels had 3 million or more in attendance. No score, bottom of the third, and number eight hitter Keon Wong leads off, and Keller that was a hard slider in for a strike. 
Long is playing in right field for the second time in the series with Dexter Fowler done for the year. Came up and got home plate umpire Adam Hammery. So Mike Matheny would say, I like the way the ball's coming out of his hand. It looks good. He's got a nice little downhill angle and he's got extreme movement. He's staying on top of the ball. Call third strike with a fastball. That's Keller's second. Blue KC pitch tracks will show you. Look at this baby. Salvi wanted it a little further out, but man, that's close enough. Oh man. Wong, you've got to go. Keller beat the Angels and Griffin Canning back on April the 14th. That ended up being a 6-1 game. And that was Keller's best start of the year to that point. It was his third start. Joel was talking about his conversation with Whit Merrifield and Keller was kind of being hit blindsided by his first two starts of the year. And that was the first one where we started to get a glimpse that he was able to start putting the pieces back together. It's a bit rocky for him in his first four, but now he's been trending in the right direction in his last eight. On the ground to Witt. And Fletcher is out number two. So first time through the Angels get a single and a walk and now leadoff man Justin Upton. He flied out to right in the first inning. It's a strike. We were talking last night about how the Royals just really need a lift from a starting pitcher. Royal starters this year are averaging about four and two thirds innings per start. Mm. Line foul off to the right field side. Every team struggles for consistency in all three areas pitching defense and timely hits. That's the whole key and that's the magic of the game. When you get that you get a lot of wins and, and so sometimes you know you you get in the bullpen it's doing their job and offense but no no starting pitching usually the starting pitching if it's averaging four innings per start that's not good and, and this is a Royals team that's struggled with wins mm. good in April not so good in, in May. Now they're on another little losing streak. They're a 500 team now, but they've, they're better than that, I believe. Great spot there. Three and two. Still three balls, two strikes. Upton is an accomplished hitter, and yet he's had a bad time with fastballs this year. And when Keller's on, that's his best pitch. And it's a fastball sinking down and away. And that's Brad's second walk. And here's Shohei Otani. Who lined to right his first time up. He's the subject of tonight's Kia player profile. And including that first inning at bat, he is eight out of 18 against the Royals with two home runs. Last night, his home run was 470 feet to right center. Listening to the Highlight 
on MLB.com and getting the Angels perspective. And the announcers last night included guys who have been with the Angels for a long time. Otani goes the other way. Jose Moda as a broadcaster. Mark Gubiza, former Royals, a broadcaster. Garrett Anderson, who played a long time there. And all three were asking themselves, when was the last time did you see a ball land here? Hmm. They weren't expecting the ball right there, I can tell you, those fans. Truly amazing. When's the last time we saw a player that could hit a ball at 100, can throw one at 100, and can run at 100? <laughs> you just can't see it. You don't see that. Well, a lot of his early accomplishments, comparisons were made to Babe Ruth. But Otani takes it to another level with his speed. Absolutely. Nothing against the Babe. Nope. Rendon struck out on three pitches in the first inning with the third pitch being a 98 mile an hour fastball. It would be great if we could get some commentary from Babe Ruth on Otani. Just to hear what he would have to say about that. I bet he would be thrilled. Two and one. You were talking about how Rendon is just so relaxed. Now, he's an accomplished hitter. He led the major leagues in RBIs a couple of years ago, but we don't we don't see a lot of him, but he almost looks too relaxed. Yeah. And he's been late on the fastball all series. Three balls, one strike. Sometimes you'll hear a hitting coach say to a hitter who's going through what he's going right now, you got to get started a little sooner. Yeah. Cheat. Cheat a little bit. He's looking for a pitch to drive here. Inside edge, three balls, two strikes. Best team in the major leagues hitting with runners in scoring position or tied for best in the league with. Runners in scoring position and two outs. That's an excellent mark. This guy drove in 126 two years ago. And Keller gets him to hit it to right field. Dozier is back and it's going to be over his head and up against the wall. So with two outs and nobody on, the Angels get a walk, a single, and a double from Rendon and take a 2 0 lead. This is a great swing right here. You're not trying to pull it. Look where that is. That pitch is below his knees and on the outside part of the plate. And no stride. Just all hands stayed inside the ball and hit it where it was pitched. And success comes along with that. He tries to pull it. He rolls over a ground ball and they're out of the inning. That's just great hitting. Nothing wrong with the pitch. Jared Walsh for the runner in scoring position and he takes high. You know this has also been a theme in the series. Now this all started with a walk to Upton who's an accomplished major league hitter. But the count was 0 and 2. Yeah. One and one and how many times lately. Have the Royals been hurt. By an inning. That was charged by an 0 2 walk or a 1 2 walk or a hitter hit by a pitch yeah. with the count 0 or 2 and 1 and 2. It, it turns the whole complex of the game around. It does. Yeah. 
strike. Adam Hammery is really doing a good job of staying with the strike zone and not necessarily being sold by whether the pitcher hits the glove or not. And Wall somehow made contact with that and pulled it foul. Angels have 10 walks now in this series and half have come around to score. And that's what got this rally started in the third, a two out walk. Two and two on Walsh. Three and two. Keller has thrown 26 pitches in this inning, and this is another count that has gone from Keller having the advantage to a full count. Walsh was down one and two at one point. And a breaking ball got him looking, but the Angels get two with two outs and take the early lead. Hey, Pedro. Hey, Pedro. What was it like when you won your first Cy Young Award? Well, I was... What about when you won the pitching triple crown? Well, um... And how did you feel when you won a World Series? I was, uh... Hey, Pedro. Man, this guy asks a lot of questions. Hey, Pedro. Pedro. He might make a good MLB Network analyst. If you let someone answer a question. The analyst of MLB Tonight, answering baseball's toughest questions. Oh, and what's it like to be an eight-time All-Star? Well, I was, and what uh, about getting into the Hall of Fame? Liner, and it falls in. And that's a strikeout. To the warning track, it's out of here. He struck him out swinging. One. It's gone. Kansas Health System injury report update on Danny Duffy as he continues to rehab that left forearm flexor strain and I had the chance to talk this evening with head trainer Nick Kenny who said that actually back here at Kauffman Stadium last Friday Danny threw a light side session light side session meaning 15 to 20 pitches only fastballs and changeups then on Monday in Anaheim he threw a full side so that's all pitches 27 pitches tomorrow in Oakland he'll throw 35 pitches all those pitches in a side session and then they'll determine how does he feel how's his endurance how are his mechanics if all of that checks out or however it checks out they'll then make the determination of another side session or throwing to live hitters there's a progression of ramping that back up also on a side note 
Alberto Mondesi. He's been hitting every single day, but he was running today. Not at 100 percent, but at mostly full speed. Look at that pretty play, but could not complete the throw. And so a good report, guys, on Alberto Mondesi as Nick liked his energy. He looked fluid. They expect him to run again tomorrow. It's good news right there. They need him in the worst way. Both of those guys. Yeah. Salvador. How about that? Salvi get an infield hit. Now Rendon, he makes this play eight out of ten times. He just pulled it a little bit, pulled the throw. His momentum took him all the way to the yeah. dugout. That's a that's a full head of steam heading that way, and then have to throw all the way across the diamond is not easy. Solaire pulls it past third, and that's down into the corner. Salvi goes to third. Vance Wilson will hold him there, and Jorge Solaire has a double. And the Royals have second and third, and nobody out. Okay, I like how they're answering back. They've got to get back on the board here. Find a way now. Nobody out. Low 90s strike. Watch Salvi. I loved his effort here too. You know he was coming hard all the way to third base. Look at him. He's saying I'm going to score here. OK. And he shut him down. Look at that. Love that from your catcher. He grinds it out every night. Dozier made the last out of the first inning which came with the bases loaded after two walks a single and an error by Canning trying to pick off Merrifield at second base. And Dozier hits it in the air to shallow right and Walsh will make the play. So Dozier is 0 for 2 and that'll bring up Gutierrez. Gutierrez lined out to deep right center field his first time up caught by the center fielder Ward. Angels defense they're playing back so any ground ball would score a score a run so they've got to be able to find a way here. Side edge for a strike. Canning most likely has a scouting report card on the inside of his cap. And or what the sequence of signals is with his catcher with the runner at second. As he looked at the card and then nodded at Max Stassi. Chop to the left side and a race to third and Soler is going to get there in front of Iglesias. So Iglesias recognize that did Rendon field that ground ball looked like Iglesias was going to go after Soler. Yeah and, and Soler had to he hesitated just for a down second by his feet. Yeah he dropped it. He would have had. He would have tagged. Well, I saw Solaire slowing down, like as if he was running into an out. But <laughs> he did. He didn't even realize he didn't have the ball. Sure, he did. So it's a base hit, and the Royals have two infield base hits in the inning. Gutierrez puts an end to an 0-4-11, and now first and third. And Taylor got a pitch up and swings through a fastball. OK great opportunity here to visualize middle away the, the location of the baseball is in the middle or away because they're playing him all pull infielders are back and you want to keep it away from the third baseman. So you're definitely thinking right side here. Bunt not a bad idea but he bunts it foul and when you do that with one strike now you're now you're down 0 and 2. So Matheny right now is is giving 
Vance Wilson, the third base coach, sign him on what to do. Is this contact? Is he coming in on contact? Is he going on contact? Or is he going to see if they're all back? Just put it in play. He lined to right his first time up. And a called third strike. And Michael doesn't often react like that. It looked low. No, you know, it's too close. The runner at third and less than one, or excuse me, less than two outs. Got at least foul it off. Royals had second and third and one out in the first. And we're not able to get a runner home. It became bases loaded two outs. And now second and third with nobody out in this inning. The Royals have one home. Now it's first and third and two away. Nicky Lopez popped out to short in the second inning. And Canning makes the play. So both teams feel pretty good. The Royals are on the board, but Canning avoids giving up a second run. Behold the Tree Dasher by Allbirds. The planet's first proper running shoe made from natural materials like, well, trees. Mile after mile after mile. The Tree Dasher keeps your feet going while reducing your carbon footprint. Break a sweat, not the planet, Allbirds. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can. No, I got it. Sweet unholy cobalt. Is Brad's car better than mine? Better sign-up bonus? Better travel perks? Is that how Brad took that trip to Barcelona? Wait, Barcelona. Barcelona? Steve, I got it on NerdWell. Ah. He said all that out loud. Want a better credit card? We've got you. From the best rates to the best rewards, for all your credit card questions, turn to the nerds. Slugger's Blue Crew. Members receive a Royals Youth Tank Top, Blue Crew Street Sign, Temporary Tattoos, Multi-Use Gator, two tickets to a game, all for 30 bucks. To join at Royals.com slash Blue Crew. Two on Angels. Angels got two on a double by Rendon in the bottom of the third, and the Royals Picked up their run on an RBI by Kelvin Gutierrez in the top of the fourth. Stassi lines it to center field and Taylor is right there for the out and Stassi is 0 for 2. But continues to swing the bat well in the series. It's hot. It's in a nice little groove. Has no movement at all. He's tr just trusting his hands. Taylor Ward walked his first time up. Keller has walked two. One has come around to score. Brad did not have a walk in his last start against Minnesota for the first time this year. One ball, one strike.
two and one. Keller on Friday against Minnesota pitched a scoreless first inning and then in the bottom of the first the Royals scored nine and then in the second they scored four more so he was pitching with a huge lead all night and Mike Matheny saw an opportunity to get him out early he threw just 86 pitches the Royals went on to win that game 14 5 and that is their last win. Fastball away at 96 with some cutting action to it, and Keller has struck out four. Blue KC pitch tracks. Look at the, look at the movement, man. That's nice. Good downhill angle there. Ward was tardy. Chop foul by Iglesias. Iglesias played for Baltimore last year and he hit 373 in the abbreviated season. That is a base hit the other way. Dozier cuts it off. Iglesias is digging for second and he will be out. On an excellent throw by Dozier and a quick tag by Nicky Lopez. Call was made by second base umpire Chad Fairchild. Lopez is convinced he went running off the field. The Angels want to make sure. Mike Gallego is their bench coach. Yep, look at Nicky Lopez. Getting up in front, catch that ball out in front like that, get the tag on him before he gets to the base here. Looked like he got him. Dozier, good spin move. Good, accurate throw, one hop. And no challenge. Inning over. Ten years ago, I had an undiagnosed heart condition, and erectile dysfunction was actually the first sign that something was wrong. Luckily, I'm a doctor, an expert in sexual health, and Zach's dad. Not everyone has a doctor in the house, and some health conditions can be really tough to talk about. We started Roman to change that. Now you can go online and chat with a physician. And if treatment is right for you, we'll ship genuine medication right to your door. If you're experiencing ED, hair loss, cold sores, or other issues, let's take care of it. It's not just because Bowling Branch organic cotton sheets are incredibly soft. They are. And it's not just that they're free from toxins and made by people who are paid and treated fairly. That's true too. It's because home is where the magic happens. And with better sheets made in safer ways, home makes the world a better place. Bowl and Branch. Right now, try for 30 nights risk-free and get free shipping at bowlandbranch.com. Here for good highlight. How about this throw? Now that makes five different Royal outfielders with an assist this year so far. Dozier's first, put it, put it right on the money. Gave it to Nicky Lopez where he could get down there and tag his arm before his left arm got in there. Top of the order and third time through against Griffin Canning. Witt is one for two with a single the other way. One ball, one strike. He has also flied to center.
off of his foot. One and two. Royals have one run, four hits. They have stranded five in the first four innings. They left the bases loaded in the first. And then Canning had one, two, three innings in the second and third. The Royals got a run in the fourth, but stranded two more. Hit right to Rendon at third base. In time, one away. Now Carlos Santana, he has struck out and fly to center field. How about that movement? It's been an effective pitch for him. Same arm speed as his fastball, just taking something off. One and one. Three in a row. One yeah. ball, two strikes. And he's getting results. He's getting some swing and misses, so he's going to stay with it. You can tell when a, a guy's struggling, he's swinging at a lot of different pitches that he normally wouldn't swing at for Santana. Just a little bit aggressive. He runs to his dugout and he's got it. That is a tough play for a catcher. Santana trying to pull that outside pitch. That's what happens. It pops you up. You know, good focus here, especially when you're running on the run like that. That's an excellent catch. He has played well all series and he's done so with a big smile on his face. Yeah, he's, he's playing happy. That's how you do it. Andrew Benintendi with two down. Benintendi has walked and struck out. So Canning, he's executing his pitches where he wants it. There's a reason why he's mowing him down. He's, he's, he's hitting his spots. He wasn't early because he was a little bit nervous. He was a little flustered because he knows he's getting off to bad starts and he settled in nicely. Two and one. And a much better tempo than the first inning. I mean, he was bothered yeah. By base runners, the moment Whit Merrifield opened the game with a single. And Attendee crushes one to right field. Wong goes back and makes the play. Three up, three down to the bottom of the fifth. The Angels lead 2 1. Mr. Smoltz at MLB Network. You've done color commentary, game analysis, and demos. How do you juggle so many roles? It just comes naturally, I guess. <laughs> the analyst of MLB Tonight, answering baseball's toughest questions. Claire, how do you know how much bling to wear before each game? What bling you wear during the game is a very important decision. You want to wear enough so you look good, but not too much where it slows you down on the base pass. Some diamonds are always nice, but on a sunny day, the reflection can get in your eye and make you miss the play. 
Thanks, Cliff. Very informative. <laughs> the analyst of MLB Tonight, answering baseball's toughest questions, only on MLB Network. Best seats in the house, right behind home plate. A limited number of premium season tickets are still available. Includes access to the Diamond Club Lounge, premium parking, and in-seat service. Go to royals.com slash STM. Angels two, Royals one. Brad Keller gets ready for the bottom of the fifth inning. Hoping to give Mike Matheny five innings for the first time in this series. Mike Matheny had somebody warming up in the first inning behind his starting pitcher in the first two games. He had to go to Irvin Santana in the first inning on Monday night when Jackson Coar came out after two thirds. He did not have to go to Ronald Bolaños in the first inning last night. Chris Bubich ended up going four and then Bolaños was impressive in his two innings. Keller has given up two runs, four hits. He struck out Wong looking in the third. Still one and two. Back in the third inning, Brad Keller got Wong and Fletcher for the first two outs. And then even after that, the Angels went on to score two. After a walk to Upton, Otani singled and Anthony Rendon hit a two out, two run double to right field. Still two balls, two strikes. Do it again. That was 96. Keller doing what he should be doing. He's going right after him. Eight, nine spots coming up here. He can do. He can hit it. That's what he's doing. Eight pitches so far for. The younger brother of Colton Wong from Hilo, Hawaii. Taylor glides into left center field, and there's one away in the fifth inning. How about Ronald Bolaños last night? How about it, man? What a breath of fresh air this was. And he came right in throwing hard. Good stuff. Controlling his body. And, you know, eliminated a lot of moving parts between that last year and this year. And he is showing it, man. That hard, heavy sinker was moving. He shut them right down. Looked outstanding. A slider, his sinker's four seamer. It had a lot of movement on it, and he was attacking it with high velocity. Those strikeouts were five in a row, tying a Royals record for a reliever. Mike Matheny said before the game tonight that Bolaños was pitching so well that 
first thought was to just have him finish the game just pitch the last four innings. But he was so impressive after the first two that he and Cal Eldred said hey let's shut him down so we can bring him back sooner rather than later. Yeah great idea. I wondered why they didn't leave him in there. I know he stretched out a little more than that but. But he sure was impressive. Mike Bethini said on the back of his card that he has for each individual pitcher jotting down notes in the dugout things to talk about later. Gutierrez nice play and throws out Fletcher. Mike Matheny on the back of Bolaños card last night wrote wow. <laughs> That's a good word for that. Look at Gutierrez and he's got glue in that glove man. He's he's really good. Look at him. Nice movement on pitch. He's up on his toes ready to go either way. Taps his glove and throws him out. Santana helped him. Got a little bit of time when he hits it that hard to get up and make the throw. Nicely done. He had some movement on that throw. He did. So two outs and nobody on and this is when Keller got in trouble with Upton in the third inning. He was 0 and 2 with Upton who eventually reached with a walk. Otani singled and then Rendon hit the two run double. No balls two strikes. Justin Upton is playing for Joe Madden in Anaheim. His older brother BJ played for Joe Madden in Tampa Bay. The pitch ate him up. One and two. I'm sure that they had some conversations about that. You know, Justin and Joe Madden talking about his brother. I'm sure they've had some good conversations about that. He was a heck of a player. He got 12 years in. Their careers were remarkably similar. BJ was a second overall pick. Justin was a first overall pick in front of Alex Gordon. They both were shortstops that moved to the outfield. They both got to the big leagues at age 19. They hit their 100th career home run on the exact same day. Wow. And they're the only brothers in Major League history that had a 2020 season the same year. Wow. Unbelievable. Other than that, they were just completely different. Isn't that crazy? I mean, I mean, how many how many players how many players from completely different families have those kind of similarities? Oh, that's, that's, that's really something. That is his first hit of the night. And the Angels are working on another two out rally against Keller in the fifth inning. They also played together for a while with the Braves. Well, that's amazing. Back in 2008, when Joe Madden took the Rays to the World Series, B.J. Upton hit seven home runs in the ALCS against the Red Sox. Man. He was on fire. I remember that. Otani is one for two. Outside for ball one. Good spot. Trying to stay away from him. Don't float anything in the middle. He don't miss. Make him go to the opposite field. Inside two and zero. Oh. This is what he has done as a hitter. He is second in the league in home runs, second in slugging percentage, and it's not just power for him. He's tied for first in extra base hits, sixth in RBIs. Two balls and one strike.
The Angels have five hits tonight. Four have come with two outs. They have two walks against Keller. Both of those have come with two outs. So Keller's had a tough time buttoning down the final out of the inning, and now he's three and one with Otani with Rendon on deck. Yeah, you know what? It's it's nice that Madden has Rendon hitting behind Otani because Rendon can hit as well and knock in runs. But you got to be careful with Otani. Otani will walk, so another walk with two outs, and it gives Rendon another shot. With two outs and nobody on in the third, the Angels got a walk and a single, and then Rendon hit a two-run double, and now in the fifth, with two outs, a single, and a walk, Cal Eldred's going to go out and chat with Keller before going after Rendon. So while they discuss strategy, we have a word from the Home Depot. Lockers aren't just for the clubhouse anymore. Shop online and pick up your orders using the Home Depot's convenient order pickup lockers. Cal is letting Salvi do most of the talking. Rendon struck out on three pitches in the first inning and just looked overmatched by Keller. But then he took a 1 2 count to 3 and 2 in the third and hit the opposite field double with the runners going. On a strike down and away. It was an excellent professional hit right there. He, a veteran swing. Oh, and one. Keller knew he had to be careful. Look at that. He put that ball right down there in the far corner, and look at how he went down and got it. Just went with the pitch. Hit in the gap, knocked in the fair, and that's it for them so far. And now grounded to Gutierrez. So not this time around. Keller gets Rendon. The Angels strand two, but they lead 2-1. Every time he steps up to the plate, oh goes into his windup, or runs one down, he caught it. Oh, you won't see a better one than that. He competes not only against the other team, but against the toughest adversary, himself. MLB Tonight, where the best outdo their best on MLB Network. It's time for MLB Pitch, Hit, and Run, presented by MLB Network, the official youth skills competition of Major League Baseball. Give the kids in your community a chance to compete in the 2021 Pitch, Hit, and Run Finals by hosting a local competition. Sign up for free at PitchHitRun.com. daily at MLB.com slash vote and on Google by searching for your favorite players to send them to Colorado. How about this guy right here? Salvi is all-star worthy. Again. He had a chance to drive in some runs in the first inning. The Royals 
at second and third and one out against Griffin Canning who really labored and struggled with his concentration and focus in the first and Salvi missed a couple of fastballs. That breaking balls outside for ball one. He leads off our Sonic Slam inning. Our contestant is Rick Braun from Kansas City. If the Royals hit a home run out of the park in this inning, Rick wins $1,200. If the Royals hit a grand slam out of the park, Rick wins $25,000 from Sonic and the Royals. And you can become a Sonic Slam contestant through the Royals ballpark app. One and two. Salvi didn't drive in the runs in the first, but he led off the fourth with an infield single and then scored on Kelvin Gutierrez infield single. Canning has given up just one run on four hits. Still one and two. Mm, that's the one he likes to drive to right center. Just off. Fooled him. Got him off balance. Good spot again. Canning, he's holding his angels right there by executing some nice pitches, good location, changing speeds nicely. Just what you would want him to do. Doesn't always work. It's working for him so far. Solaire walked in the first to load the bases and then doubled in the fourth. That got Perez to third. So the Royals got the one run in the fourth inning, but they had runners at second and third and nobody out. And then first and third and one out. But Canning allowed just the one run. He has had two key strikeouts tonight among his five. Off the end of the bat and rolled to Iglesias. Two outs. First strikeout was against Salvi with second and third and one out in the first and then against Taylor with runners at first and third and one out in the fourth. And another big out for him was getting Dozier to pop out to first with runners at second and third and nobody out. That's a swing. Jose Navas is the umpire at first from Venezuela. Third time through are the Royals and Canning's just you know going with more off-speed pitches, more breaking balls, change-ups. Not, he's, he's not throwing any fastballs because he doesn't need to. He's getting chase. Royals a chase. Lately, the Royals. When they have had the opportunity for a third time against a starter, done as good as anybody. Yeah. But they're 0 for 5 tonight against Canning. Dozier hits it, and Iglesias very casually makes the play and spins and throws out Dozier. And the Royals are down in the sixth. Claire, how do you know how much bling to wear before each game? What bling you wear during the game is a very important decision. You want to wear enough so you look good, but not too much where it slows you down on the base pass. Some diamonds are always nice, but on a sunny day, the reflection can get in your eye and make you miss the play. Thanks, Cliff. 
Very informative. <laughs> the analyst of MLB Tonight, answering baseball's toughest questions, only on MLB Network. Mr. Smoltz, at MLB Network, you've done color commentary, game analysis, and demos. How do you juggle so many roles? It just comes naturally, I guess. <laughs> the analyst of MLB Tonight, answering baseball's toughest questions. take great pride in reminding all fans that everyone is welcome and valued at Kauffman Stadium and to that end if you buy a theme ticket to Friday night June 18th you can receive a rainbow themed tank top visit Royals.com slash theme ticket and the Royals will have the Tigers and the Red Sox in town for the next homestand beginning on Monday. That is hit hard and foul. One and one on Jared Walsh, who has been one of the most productive hitters in baseball if you go back to the end of last season. And one of the reasons why they were able to move Albert Pujols out of that spot so he could do it every single day. They found some, a few guys to play the outfield. Walsh was playing outfield. After Dexter Fowler got hurt, they're trying to find a replacement for him, and they've been moving several guys in and out ever since. And when they lost Trout, now they're like saying, okay, we, we got to really find some outfielders. They really like his bat, they like his glove. That's a little bit low, three and one. And then you do some digging and you go, okay, where did they get Jared Walsh? How about in the 39th round in 2015 out of the University of Georgia? Yeah, and he could pitch too. He got a good arm. Uh, Keller wants to know where the pitch was two pitches ago, and that is his fourth walk. Okay, Keller tonight, you know, he, uh, the ball's been coming out of his hand nicely. I mean, he, he had some success early, one, two, three inning. That's exactly what they needed after the first two games of the series. And you know what? The fastball looks like it's got a lot of life. Breaking ball looks okay. He just a, it wasn't even a bad pitch. He threw the run Rendon that knocked in the two runs. It was a good fastball. I think he looks good tonight. He's got good tempo. You know, he's walked a few more than he'd like, but the Royals are right in this game. That's the bottom line. Stassi is grounded into a double play and line to center. Max Stassi is the Angels' hottest hitter at the moment. He is 0 for 2 tonight. He is 9 for his last 21 with three home runs, including a home run in each of his last three games. Eight runs scored and seven RBIs. And there's a line drive into left center field. He is not missing. Wall stops at second base, and the Angels have two on with nobody out. Yeah, especially if the pitcher misses, he's not. He's not fouling him off. You know, he's not, he's not popping him up. You know, he's 
It's good, easy swings. Sometimes a hitter can make it look so easy. He's got one of those swings right going right now. Kyle Zimmer makes his way to the bullpen mound with Larry Carter right behind him. Royals are ready for a bunt and Taylor Ward shows bunt and takes a strike. Gutierrez is in at third Santana is on the grass over at first the Angels will bunt they are second in the league in sack bunts which doesn't go with being third in the league in home runs in the air and over Santana he will go down to second base so that keeps the double play in order. First and third and one out. But you don't see that happen very often. You just never know which way the ball is going to bounce. But man, Santana, he's coming in to feel the ball, and whoops, he butted it over his head. So a heads up play. You know, he, he could have just shuffled it to, to Witt, and they could have thrown to second. Witt would have, and they'd have had a double play there. But still, he got the lead and run. But see, Witt's right there. He wants the ball. He said, Give it to me. But you know you got to think quick in those situations. Just getting out is important. You want to keep the ball down here because Iglesias he swung, swung at that because he wants to knock in a sack fly. He wants to get one up. He can get the run home from third and stay off the ground for a double play. Two. Glacius has reached on a fielder's choice and singled. Keller's induced six ground ball double plays, seven, including the first one tonight. And Iglesias is grounded into four. Let's see if he can make it happen here. 0 oh, and 2. Pitch outside and down. He tries to pull it. Ooh, he just keeps going that way with it. That's a great swing. Wall scores. Ward goes to third. Iglesias has a double and the Angels lead 3 1. Lead off walk turns into a run. Iglesias twice now with swings down the right field line. Identical back to back hits have been that way. Now that's a ball right there at 95 with exactly how it should be struck. Let the ball travel deep. Good same A swing as if you would pull it. You just wait a couple ticks longer. So walks continue to hurt Keller. The Royals will bring the infield in for Wong. No balls and one strike. So that's 12 walks for the Angels who were last in the league coming into the series. 12 walks and six turning into runs and now a bunt the runner at third base Ward was not coming down the line. One and one. Brian Butterfield an experienced third base coach goes through the signs. And then says something verbally to Ward down at third. And a line drive into center field is going to drop in front of Taylor. One run is home, and now Taylor just couldn't get set for a throw, and Iglesias will score. And Kean Wong drives in two, and the Angels have three in the sixth inning, and they lead 5 1. Just fought it off. Again, elevation is is the key for that hit. It's, it's elevated, so really, with the infield in, that's an easy ball to just put in play like that. It's taking advantage of the pitch that's up. Now 
That guy right there says it all. Exactly. Kyle Zimmer comes on with one out in the sixth. Behold the Tree Dasher by Allbirds. The planet's first proper running shoe made from natural materials like, well, trees. Mile after mile after mile. The Tree Dasher keeps your feet going while reducing your carbon footprint. Break a sweat, not the planet, all birds. Kevin Millar and Stephen Nelson promise to bring you all the fun from around the league. Pinky promise, and, and, you know, and these, these can't be broken. Intentional Talk, only on MLB Network. Baseball on Valley Sports is brought to you by Chevy. Find yours at your Kansas City area Chevy dealer. We do not advise you to drive that fast yeah, this in a stadium parking lot. Really something. Yeah. Even in Southern California. Yeah. Wow. Kyle Zimmer is a Chevy call to the bullpen. The damage has already been done. As the Angels have turned a 2-1 game into a 5-1 game. They have three in this inning. Kyle comes on with a runner at first base and one out and will face number nine hitter David Fletcher. Yep. Bottom line is, is they've pitched and they've hit and, they, and they've defended only one error and it was by the pitcher tonight Canning. So. Jake Brents pitched last night. He had a scoreless inning, and we we're showing you how Brents, Zimmer, and Scott Barlow, all three have been on a great run. And the Royals bullpen has been strong for the last three and a half weeks. But these guys in particular, Scott Barlow has 11 straight scoreless innings. Jake Brents, 13 after last night, and Kyle Zimmer has been great since coming back from the injured list. They've all executed just as, as they Mike Matheny wanted him to. Good job. Kyle Zimmer, he's on there now. We're going to use his four pitches, fastball, slider, curve, change. He has mid-90s in his tank. He's a pitcher as a reliever. Does that make sense? He pitches. Yes. He doesn't throw. A lot of relievers today that are just chuck it up there as hard as they can. Exactly. Hoping for the best. Mike Kruko, yeah, former big league pitcher and popular television analyst for the Giants, had a, a great line in regard to some of those relievers that just throw it as hard as they can. He called them brain dead hurlers. <laughs> <laughs> He's great, good character. That skips away from Salvi, so Wong had run on the previous two pitches, which were fouled away, and now he'll move up on a wild pitch. Salvi did all he could to just keep it in front of him, just, just kicked off the heel of his glove. Okay, 
Wong stays out of the double play now by advancing. Good job. One and two on Fletcher. One of the toughest in the game to strike out. Two balls, two strikes. David Eckstein was number 22, wasn't he? He was. Yeah. That was David Fletcher's favorite player growing up in Southern California, and now he plays for the Angels. And where's number 22? Oh, yeah. He, what a story for him. Look at how he just chops at the ball. He just makes contact. He doesn't try to hit homers. He just wants to get on base, make, make some contact, and that's why he's tough to strike out. Look at the third base coach, Brian Butterfield. He's way over there. I mean, you know, he, he doesn't want to get hit by a foul ball. do it again. Fletcher perhaps feeling the weight of a long contract extension that he signed on opening day five years for a guy that hasn't been around very long. He's starting to warm up after a slow start. He lost a hit on a really good play by Gutierrez last time up. And Salvi with kind of a blind block there. He was looking over at the first base dugout, but had his glove in the right place. Mm -hmm. He's got soft hands. The Angels scored two in the third. They have three in the sixth. Both rallies began with a walk. Fletcher fouled it off the home plate umpire Adam Hamry's mask. Fletcher doesn't want to go. They have had one long battling at bat after another in this series. Yeah. Ninth pitch coming here. And a fastball got him looking so a tough guy to strike out. Who's a good bet to make contact and probably your best bet is to get him looking. Blue KC pitch tracks man that was a great location there 95 right down low it locked him up Fletcher you got to go and now Justin Upton it was his two out walk in the third inning that led to two runs and it was a walk from Jared Walsh in this inning, which has led to three runs. Upton has had a bad time hitting the fastball this year. It's a breaking ball in the dirt, one ball and no strikes. Hmm. Very low batting average on fastballs, but he has just been killing non fastballs. Huh. Juicy the other way around. <laughs> Took a slider the other way. One ball, one strike. Yeah. Not a lot of movement. It's just. Puts his hands on the ball. You know, when you move, especially with your head, your head moves, the ball moves. Keep your body as still as possible. Yeah. 
That fooled Salvi. <laughs> One and two. He came up out of his crouch. Two and two. So the inning is over, but the Angels score three on an RBI from Iglesias and two from Wong. Money goals this year, NerdWallet can help make them happen. Like getting auto insurance to match your new zero mile commute. We have tools for that. Want to refinance your mortgage and put those savings into the college fund? We have tips for that too. Or get a low interest credit card for your long awaited honeymoon? We can help you find the one credit card that is. Discover and compare the smartest credit cards, mortgage lenders, and more on NerdWallet. For all your money questions, turn to the nerds. Canning is a subject for our John Deere mowing them down. And unfortunately, again, an Angels pitcher is doing the job. He's really done a nice, nice work. I mean, he's not pitching anything like his ERA would, would show you, that 582 ERA. He looks like he's on top of his game tonight. He's going to stay in for the seventh. He was coming off a bad start against Seattle on Thursday, but he's given up one run, four hits. So far tonight with five strikeouts. Juan Lagares is in center and Taylor Ward who was in center shifts over to right so Lagares bats in Wong's spot. That's the number eight position. There's a breaking ball in for a strike to Gutierrez. Canning gets an out in this inning that'll be a season high six and a third. Yep. 0-2 oh on Gutierrez. He drove in the Royals' run back in the fourth inning. He's also lined to center, and he made key outs in the first two games of the series, both in the second inning on Monday night and Tuesday night, grounding into double plays. And the Royals were building rallies against Bundy and Heaney. Canning strikes out his sixth, and he is set down nine in a row. Here's a message from your Kansas City Toyota dealers. Hey Royals fans, I'm teaming up with the Kansas City area Toyota dealers to give you a chance to take my Toyota. Come on, take it. What do you have for us tonight? Uh, I, I, I'm just not in a good mood right now. Sorry. 
It's getting me down. So no, no. Oh, what a feeling. No, not down. tonight. Not tonight. We'll have to. We'll have to work on it tomorrow. Tomorrow's okay. a new day. I'm, right. I'm not having a good night. Uh, man, this team has worked so hard, you know, to, to get themselves back to 500 and, and over again. You want to keep your head above water. And, you know, that one loss, the first loss they had on the homestand against Minnesota, they'd already won two. And the way they lost it in the ninth like that, and they could have won it, that's the kind of loss that can, that can send you in a spiral, mm -hmm. and they, they haven't been able to come out of it. Streaky team. You know, they're very streaky. Taylor is out. Well, here are the numbers to add to that. They had the best record in the major leagues. Then they lost 11 in a row. Then they won 13 out of 19. And now they've lost four in a row and they're down by four with two outs in the seventh inning. Yeah. Mm. Mike Myers is just waiting for the call. Nicky Lopez has popped a short and grounded back to Canning. Oh and two. Away. So you know, Canning, his his secondary pitches have made him tonight. And you know that fastball of his has been pretty highly flammable as far as the home run goes. Five home runs on that pitch, five on his slider. His curveball, it has been three for six on the curve, but you know what though? He he's he's putting it right where he wants it tonight. Everything's down. There's one line into center field. There you go. That's one that in the middle. Got it up a little bit. Good swing. So man on for Witt, who is one for three. If he gets another hit, that means a free two liter of Pepsi products from Price Chopper. That's when Witt gets two or more hits in a game. Learn more at mypricechopper.com slash hits. 89 pitches. Joe Madden says that's enough. And Angel starters have given up four runs in 18 and two thirds innings in this series. Nerds. Have new money goals? NerdWallet can help you find the credit card to make them happen. Want to earn enough points for a weekend of fancy camping? We have options for that. Maybe have a better credit card than your older sister. We have comparison tools for that. Or find a card that lets you donate your cash back to food banks. We have tips for that too. From low rates to the best rewards, easily discover and compare the smartest credit cards. For all your money questions, turn to the nerds. I was born to be the next big thing. No telling where I'm going, but I'll show you what I mean. Like, na 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 na
Quinn Merrifield will come up with the runner at first two down and face Mike Myers in a Chevy call to the bullpen who came in to the theme music from the movie Halloween. Yeah, well, it's only fitting. He pitched a scoreless eighth inning on Monday night. Fastball slider, mid 90s fastball, hard cutter. Little two seam sinker. Time had been granted. Witt opened the game with a single to right center. With one out, Ben Intendi walked. Griffin Canning tried to pick off Witt at second base and threw it into center field. And the Royals had second and third and one out. And Salvador Perez at the plate. There's the cutter outside. Canning struck out Salvi and then with the bases loaded two down got Hunter Dozier to ground out. And then Canning faced second and third and nobody out in the fourth inning and only gave up one. And in his six and two thirds innings he had four one two three innings. After looking like he might struggle to get out of the first inning tonight. It sure did. Got the game to the seventh. Thought the Royals were going to get him and jump on him and left him loaded. Little big hits. Again. Top to short, Iglesias will go the short way, close, but Nicky Lopez is out, so Canning's inherited run doesn't come around to score, and the Angels lead 5-1. A lot can happen with a simple, tell your story, get people excited, to get connected, to share, and sell anywhere, just, and start making a different future. Start different at GoDaddy.com. Every time he steps up to the plate, oh goes into his windup, or runs one down, he, it. Oh, you won't see a better one than that. he competes not only against the other team, but against the toughest adversary, himself. MLB Tonight, where the best outdo their best on MLB Network. Jim. Now that you're an analyst at MLB Network, do you find that your days are easier? Hmm. Hey, Jim, here's a research packet for tonight's show. I'll see you on the set in five. Maybe a little easier. The Analyst of MLB Tonight on MLB Network. group back together check out our signature suite offers for a premium experience perfect for groups of 20 to 25 people luxurious interior and leather couches TVs and sliding glass doors can be made into an open air environment secure your spot now at royals.com slash groups Kyle Zimmer closed out the sixth inning with 
Back to back strikeouts, so he stays on for the bottom of the seventh and ball one to Shohei Otani. He is one for two with a walk and a run scored. The Angels have tomorrow off, and then he will pitch on Friday. So the Royals will miss him on the mound this season. They'll say goodbye to the Angels and cross them off the schedule after tonight. Yep. One ball, two strikes. We've been talking a lot about Royals starting rotation. The bullpen overall is middle of the pack in ERA, but in the last three and a half weeks, only the Rays bullpen has a lower ERA. And the ERA is even better when the Royals are playing in a closer game than a four run game. You know what watching Otani you know he, he's able to keep his his hands back and he, he doesn't get his whole body out in front. That's why he can foul off borderline pitches with two strikes and take him to left field. And he's off balance. This is a great job of keeping his hands back. Zimmer's testing him with some good curves. There you go. So Zimmer has phase three and struck out three since coming on in the sixth inning. Got a good curve working tonight. Got him to commit. See now Salvi, he could have gloved that and kept that ball in his glove, but he didn't. He just likes to push it in front of it. He just wants to block the ball. Keep it in front. And now Zimmer gets into the middle of the batting order. Rendon, the number three hitter, and will add this to impressive numbers for the Royals bullpen. They've been the best in the American League against the heart of the opposing order. Off speed, and Rendon is out in front. The Angels had two outs and nobody on in the third against Brad Keller, and Brad Keller had just an up and down 0 and 2. He was right on the edge of a one, two, three, third inning. Left center field. Taylor makes the play. But Upton walked coming back from 0 2. Otani singled, and then Rendon drove in the Angels' first two runs. And then it was this guy right here who started a three run rally with a leadoff walk in the sixth. And then Iglesias got a run home with a double, and Keen Wong hit a two run single. Two on Walsh. We've been joking about how much he looks like former Royal Ian Kennedy. Yeah. Kennedy went on the injured list today with a hamstring problem, but he has 12 saves for the Rangers this year and a 2.53 ERA. Good for him. One ball and two strikes. Those 12 saves are third in the American League behind Liam Hendricks, Matt Barnes, and tied with Aroldis Chapman. Still one and two on Walsh. Got him set up now for a breaker. For that high fastball, Salvi wanted it right up there.
Okay, that was Breaker. Just got it, lifted up a little bit. Two and two. Zimmer doing an outstanding job of staying on the border there and throwing quality strikes. Every, every so often he'll miss in the middle, but he's for the most part pitching where he wants to throw it. Good spot. Three and two. That's a good way to watch the game. That'd be the very similar to the Diamond Club. And last night you were explaining how Kevin Ulick, who recently retired from the Royals as the senior vice president of business operations, and he took some of the features from Anaheim to Kauffman Stadium. Yep, sure did. Back and out of play. Tell you what, the Angel hitters, they are really competing. They're battling in there at bats tonight. I mean, how many here's, times have we said, here's an eight pitch yeah, at bat? Ninth pitch coming here. Yep. Yeah. And he just nicked it foul. And right before he nicked it foul, I was thinking, how many times when you look back on a series, and team one team out plays another one like the Angels have the Royals so far that you say foul balls were an important part of this series. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they've, they've been a lot of big hits because they fouled off some pitchers pitches yeah, and you don't you don't sit, talk about that that often. But, but this is they've been impressive. So Zimmer has faced five and struck out four. Five one Angels to the eighth. It is gone! Every time he steps up to the plate, oh goes into his windup, or runs one down. He caught it! Oh, you won't see a better one than that! He competes not only against the other team. But against the toughest adversary, himself. MLB Tonight, where the best outdo their best on MLB Network. This is cellulose acetate, a plant based material that's not only extremely durable, but also quite flexible, making it ideal for Warby Parker glasses, which, by the way, start at $95, including prescription lenses. Try five pairs for free at WarbyParker.com. Oh, yeah, about those prescription lenses. Warby Parker glasses come standard with custom-cut polycarbonate lenses that have been treated with scratch-resistant and anti-reflective coatings. Nice. Try five pairs for free at WarbyParker.com.
Royals trail five to one. Joel Goldberg, Royals Hall of Famer Jeff Montgomery, and Monty. Before the game on Price Chopper Royals Live, you said the first inning was critical, but only half of that equation came true. Yeah, this team been playing from behind this whole series. A golden opportunity to score in the first inning, bases loaded, didn't get anything out of it. Haven't had a lot of offense really this entire series. So they finally got the pitching in the first, but the offense so far has been a problem. Once again, we'll be here to talk about it coming up on Boulevard Royals Live. Ryan Hud. All right, guys, and yeah, you, this game isn't over. The Royals still have six outs on offense, but as it stands right now, the Royals have scored 10 runs in their last five games. They have scored five runs in this series. Look out, and Upton makes a sliding play as Rendon peeled away and gave him a lane to slide. And Carlos Santana is 0 for 4. Yeah, and Carlos is not swinging at, at strikes now. All of a sudden, he's he's they're getting him to get himself out. This ball's up out of the zone. Upton makes a nice play to keep the hit off the board, but good concentration. Here's that nice roll you were talking about, yeah. so that he doesn't land heavy on his shoulder. Yep. Yeah. Saw that play out with Travis Shaw, who plays third base for the Brewers, and he went diving for a play in Cincinnati and dislocated his shoulder. Yeah. Stay off the shoulders. You got to just find a way on your chest, mainly, depending on what, where the ball takes you. One and one on Ben and He walked in that first inning that Joel and Monty were talking about. The Royals had second and third and one out, and the bases loaded with two down, but Canning got out of that. Mike Myers got the last out of the seventh inning for Griffin Canning, who went a season high six and two thirds. He gave up one run, five hits. Two walks, but none after the first. And Intendi chases a fastball up, two down. Start looking at key outs for the Royals in this series and I point to a bunch in the early innings. Game one in the second inning the, the Angels scored four in the first in Jackson Coar's big league debut and the Royals came back with a leadoff single from Salvi and then Gutierrez grounded into a double play and that was important because then Soler Homer Taylor was hit by a pitch. Dozier doubled in a run, but the Royals only got two out of it because of the double play. When the Angels got two in the first inning last night, the Royals came right back with back to back walks against Andrew Heaney. 0 and 2 on Salvi, and then it was Gutierrez again, grounding into a double play. So that took the steam out of that inning, and the Royals would only score one. And then tonight, second and third with one out in the first, and Salvador Perez who was worn out the Angels and the league came up and missed a couple of fastballs. Yep. Canning ended up striking him out. And that was an opportunity right there for the Royals to put a crooked number on the scoreboard in the first inning. It just seems like their offense is pull happy again. They're, they're all up there trying to pull and they're losing losing sight of right field getting on base singles. And when you pull off you miss. Or you hit ground balls. Inning over. Wade Davis will get the bottom of the eighth with the Royals down by four. Hey Al, during tonight's show, what was that meatball you threw? Meatball? That was a hitting demonstration, and that's what I was supposed to do. Right. Next question. <laughs> the analyst of MLB Tonight, answering baseball's toughest questions. You want that home run feeling? Then step in the box and let it rip. 
Get ready for the Major League Baseball Junior Home Run Derby, powered by at MLB Develops. Compete locally and swing your way to the 2021 Junior Home Run Derby Finals. Get your community involved by hosting a local derby. Sign up for free at jrhrd.com. After the game tonight, the Royals will fly to Oakland and begin a four-game series with the A's. Mike Miner, who finished last year with the A's after being traded from the Rangers, he'll pitch game one, then Brady Singer, Jackson Kowar, Chris Bubich. So Singer, Kowar, and Bubich in a row, games two through four in Oakland. The A's, by the way, are in first place in the West. Wade Davis comes on for the bottom of the eighth inning. He gave Mike Matheny two and a third innings on Monday night. Yeah, let's see how he looks tonight. He's this is curve, got a big curve. His signature pitch is his cut fastball, and he'll mix in a changeup every so often. Two and zero oh against Max Stassi. He's one for three. Good pitch. Two and one. Keeping it down in the way. Brad Keller gave up five runs and five and a third. Kyle Zimmer pitched an inning and two thirds with four strikeouts. Now it's two and two on Stassi. Is fair and down into the corner. And Max Stassi. Keep an eye on him the rest of the year. He is two for four tonight and 11 for his last 23. My goodness. Well, it's because he's using the whole field. He's got power. We saw him hit a shot to right field over the fence. Now look at this. That's just perfect right there. When you can hit that ball like that and see it out of the batter's box. He's locked in. <laughs> Taylor Ward has walked, struck out, reached on a fielder's choice, and scored. He started the game in center, and he has since moved to right. Ooh, 
Breaking balls in there. Nice. I haven't seen him use that pitch a lot. And that's a good one. That's a jelly legger. One and two. The inside edge. A cutter that started in and Ward gave up on it. One out. That away, waiter. Nice, nice working. Pitches all look good. Sharp tonight. Yeah, Ward, you got to go. Runner at second, one out to Jose Iglesias. 0 and 1. He shot two balls down the right field line, two fastballs. One and one. Two. Yeah. He, he's making some kind of adjustments. It looks like he's taking a lot more off of that that pitch there, and it's getting he's getting more depth to it. He only gave up one hit when he went two and a third innings on Monday night. Stassi over to third. That outing for Wade on Monday night was the third longest of his career as a reliever. And it had been nine years since he had pitched that many innings coming out of the bullpen. Huh. And that would have been his last year with the Rays when he spent that final season with Tampa Bay out of the bullpen. Outside three balls two strikes the Royals are down by four with three outs to go so they have the infield in with a runner at third and one out. Iglesias at the plate. Iglesias is waiting in the pen that is Rizel Iglesias. The Angels closer. And that is inside for a walk. Juan Lagares comes to the plate for the first time. He came on defensively in the seventh inning. 
And he's hitting in the number eight spot where Key and Wong started the game, and Wong got a big hit. Driving in two in the Angels three run sixth inning. Yeah, infielders were drawn in. Ball was up. Hmm. Now the infield moves to double play depth. And Lagares cracked his bat. Gutierrez thought about coming to the plate, and now he throws high over at first. So in his mind, that was a one out play, and he thought about trying to get Stassi. But Lagares will get an RBI to make it 6 2 in the eighth inning. Well, you know, you got to know what you're going to do with the ball when it comes to you before the pitch is even thrown. And he wouldn't have had a chance there. Stassi looked like he ran into, you know, in the, the lane of, of the, his throw would have been. And probably should have thought about going around the horn, seeing if you could roll the pair there. Mm -hmm. That's the importance of, of an infielder. You know, your thought process is huge. The ball is moving so quickly. And everything moves fast in that infield. David Fletcher is 0 for 3. Back through the middle. Witt is there. And the inning is over. But the Angels add a run. And the Royals come up in the ninth inning. Down 6-1. Kevin Millar and Stephen Nelson promise to bring you all the fun from around the league. Pinky promise. And, and you know, and these, these can't be broken. Intentional Talk, only on MLB Network. Claire, how do you know how much bling to wear before each game? What bling you wear during the game is a very important decision. You want to wear enough so you look good, but not too much where it slows you down on the base pass. Some diamonds are always nice, but on a sunny day, the reflection can get in your eye and make you miss the play. Thanks, Cliff. Very informative. <laughs> the analyst of MLB Tonight, answering baseball's toughest questions, only on MLB Network. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Kansas City Royals. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Kansas City Royals. When the Royals got to Anaheim, their def the Angels defense had led the world in errors with 45. But you'd never know it in this series. They've been outstanding, making some excellent plays, saving the pitch count for their pitchers, saving runs, and playing a solid brand of defense. So that was not an issue at all. And they hit and they pitched for the most part and outplayed the Royals. Closer Rizel Iglesias from Cuba comes on in a non save situation. Both Iglesias for the Angels are from Cuba. So is Jorge Soler. Oh, he was down 0 and 2. Only three walks. And he and the ERA is a little bit up there. That was because earlier in the season he he had a few uh, bad innings, but for the most part, Iglesias has been nails. He's got a really good slider, and you can see the arm angle. He's already shown two different arm angles to his fellow countryman Soler. He got him with no trouble. He's a mid 90s flamethrower 
And even upper, he'll go to some 98. Look at the arm angle, though. That makes it more difficult. Outside to Dozier. Hunter is 0 for 3. Dozier says, I'd like to see you hit that pitch. <laughs> Speaking of Cuban pitchers, he reminds me a little bit of El Duque. Yeah, I see Pitching it. motion. I could see it. Jose Navas says no swing. And when he drops down that sidearm, goes that slider. Boy, that's tough to keep that front side in there. Tough, tough customer for your right handed batter. Ninety-eight. Orlando Hernandez, El Duque. Had some big years with the Yankees when they were winning World Series. Dozier works a walk. Every Cuban player has a story as to how they were able to escape their home country, yep. defect. And for Iglesias, he defected to Haiti. Back in 2013 with his brother. And actually worked out for the Reds in Haiti. Fletcher will go to second. The Angels will get the second out of the inning. Gutierrez is one for four. And then the Reds signed him to a seven year contract. And a lot of Cuban players, not all of them, but I would say most of them, have signed on with teams that have Cuban players there already. Mm -hmm. And the Reds at that time had a Roldis Chapman and a player who spent some time with the Royals and was popular, Brian Pena. Yeah. One on Michael Taylor. And he's filthy. He's got some nasty stuff. It's all moving in the arm angle. Boy, that's, that's a really a tough thing to figure out where the release point's coming from if you're a hitter. One and two. The Angels are scoring early and maintaining their leads. And for the Royals, it's been a while. You have to go back to the fifth inning on Saturday. That's the last time the Royals have had the lead. And that covers 40 innings. And that is outside. Two balls, two strikes. Mm. Of his foot. The Angels have had long grinding at bats the entire series. They've had clutch hits. They played good defense. Their starting pitching was terrific, giving up just four runs in the three games. 
Three balls, two strikes. Adam Hammery refuses to get caught up in the moment. The crowd is cheering for a called third strike. Stassi is doing everything he can to try and frame it. Yeah. Good for Hamari. Stay strong to the final pitch. And that is outside. And he came in with just three walks all year. That's two back to back. Royals got a couple of walks in the top of the first inning against Griffin Canning and were not able to turn those into runs and no walks since then until the two in this inning. There's a strike at 95. Nicky Lopez is one for three with a single. Royals need two more base runners for a chance. 0 and 2. Ten thousand four hundred and seventy four are in Anaheim to watch this game. That's the biggest crowd of the three game series. Fouled away. Royals need Nikki Lopez to get on. They need Whit Merrifield to get on. One and two. This is the even if Iglesias gets the job done, this is what a manager fears when you bring in your closer in a non safe situation. Now they have a day off tomorrow, but you want a guy to get some work and he's going to go over 20 pitches. Mm -hmm. Terry Francona, manager of the Indians, I always thought was very creative in situations like this. He would start the inning with another reliever and then with one or two outs then he would bring his closer in. Yeah. So if he throws only two pitches so be it but. He doesn't open himself up to the possibility that you know he loses his closer. Down the road because of a game that was a non save situation. Iglesias fields flips to second on a close play. And the Angels sweep the three game series. They have won 11 of their last 16. They take the season series from the Royals. The Royals drop their fifth in a row. Final score 6-1. We'll be right back.